This week on Maker Update, internet controlled RC cars, a 3D printer world record, animating 36 servos, plotter art from Wi-Fi maps, a funky ghost, and freeform circuit tips from the master. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back again with another episode of Maker Update. A big thanks to Sophie Wong for stepping in last week uh, to cover the show. I thought that was awesome. I loved it. I hope she'll do that again. But for now, let's get started with my pick for the project of the week. The guys at Surrogate TV made this RC racetrack system where anyone on the internet can control and race a real 143 scale RC car against other online players. To make it happen, they started with off-the-shelf RC cars and controllers, and after some trial and error, they eventually resorted to replacing the electronics inside the car with an Arduino programmable ESP8266 based board called the Wemos D1 Mini Pro. Not only was this board small enough to just barely fit inside the car body, but it works with a little compatible motor shield that they stack neatly on top to control acceleration and steering. As I understand it, each car is set up as its own server, taking in driver control input from a main PC, and also reading and reporting back on the status of the car. It looks like a lot of fun, and I'll leave a link in the show notes where you can drive the cars yourself. It's time for some news. Prusa Printers set a new world record for the most 3D printers operating simultaneously. The previous record was from 2014, and it was 159 printers by Airwolf 3D. The new record set by Prusa is 1,096 printers. Aside from being a cool publicity stunt, I actually found it pretty inspirational to see this scale of printer farm manufacturing. Each one made a little hex tile that were all used to create a mosaic when it was over. Now for more projects on the Arduino Project Hub, Doug Donk shows how he created this kinetic art piece using 36 servos connected up to an Arduino Uno and three 16-channel Adafruit servo motor controllers. He mentions being inspired by a piece he saw in a modern art museum, and I suspect he's talking about this work by Ralph Baker, I cover it back here in episode 103, that uses 1250 stepper motors. Doug's project is a much more approachable, bite-sized version with some hypnotic animations and an interesting interactive option using three ultrasonic sensors. Another project that mixes art and tech is this Wi-Fi painter by Richard Vigen. One part of this is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna mounted on a Raspberry Pi controlled pan and tilt mechanism. The readings from this are sent to a computer where a 3D map of Wi-Fi signal strength is created. From that 3D map, a pen plotter then constructs a landscape perspective view of the data. The longer it draws, the denser the image becomes, and the result is a beautiful mess, but I'm into it. Funkgeist by Bob Tato on Thingiverse is a geared 3D printed ghost that wiggles its chubby little ghost arms around as it spins. The original idea is that you mount it on a turntable and find a way to tie its head down so that it stays still while the base and the arms twirl around. The Ruiz brothers on Adafruit show off a version they printed in glow-in-the-dark filament and mounted on a simple motorized box with a tie down for the head. I think it could be an easy little Halloween project to try out. Now for a few tips and tools. There's a great 40-minute video of Mohipoite's talk at the IO Festival. He covers his history in making freeform circuit sculptures. About halfway in, you get to see how he creates makeshift fixtures for his projects using little breadboards and perf boards. On the Make Something channel, David Picciuto goes over his top five tools for getting started in woodworking. It really turns into seven to eight tools, but what I appreciate hearing from him is that for almost everything you'd want to do, there are multiple ways to go at it and almost always an inexpensive tool that would get the job done. On Instructables, Colleen Graves has another great guide to creating toy hacking workshops. This time she adds in mashing up your hack toy with different microcontroller boards. If you've ever thought about hosting a kid-friendly maker workshop in your area, Colleen has an outline here for a fun four-day workshop that you could probably expand into a week-long summer camp program. Issue 17 of Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter includes a tip for adding sandpaper to the bottom of an aluminum yardstick for a simple no-slip ruler or straight edge, plus a useful jig for clamping things together at right angles. And a quick reminder that I will be bringing out some projects to the East Bay Mini Maker Fair in Oakland, California on Sunday, October 27th. If you're in the area, I encourage you to come out and say hello. I'll also have some stickers to give away. And for this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they've got a new video up that goes over the basics of how stepper motors work. They show some basic operation, 
getting a stepper motor to work with an Arduino, and controlling it with a potentiometer. Worth a look if you want just a little motivation to give these motors a try. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update email newsletter to get show notes and links emailed out to you automatically each week. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.